Hi, Bathtubbers! Hi. It's time for your favorite show! Manifestation Bathtub! Who's ready for Manifestation Bathtub? We're back! We're back! We're back! We're back! We're back! We're back and we're back in a tub today! Look at that! Isn't that amazing? We are in Germany. Because we are in uh, Deutschland. Hi, Lola! So, Hi. if you we are watching, you. hit that little share button. Hit the share button. Oh, it's so, uh, it's just meta. Is that what you call it? Meta? Meta. 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 Me
So we're really excited about it. And so we're like, so this is this is what we want to talk about today is um, how did we manifest a four-day personal transformation event in Berlin that we're leading, and and what is the most basic most basic basic thing. law of manifestation? That's what we talk about on the show. What's the base, most basic law of the law of attraction? And that is thoughts become things. Pretty damn simple. Yeah. And so you know, here's. Here's the, the tricky thing about becoming a master manifester, is that you can get so caught up in these um, complicated, intricate things of law of attraction that you forget the most basic important thing, which is thoughts become things. And so, I like to think about it like this. If you were listening to the thoughts in your head all day long, and you're like, you're mission is to have a four-day personal transformation event in Berlin. Okay, here's the right hand, or it's left. I'll say right, I'll just say right. And in the right hand, you place all of your positive thoughts about Berlin and about your event. In the left hand, all your negative thoughts, fear, doubt, worry, oh my God, is anyone gonna come? Oh my God, am I gonna suck? Okay, so, in that direction is Berlin and an amazing event. In that direction is everything falling the fuck apart. Mm -hmm. All right. So, or just you not taking any action at all. So let's just get on the manifestation the bus together. Yeah. All right. So, honey, yeah. you play, oh my God, my thoughts, and I will drive the bus either towards failure or towards success. Okay. Oh my God, Berlin, it's so cool, it's so pretty in the fall, I can't wait to go. Oh my God, oh my God, what if nobody comes to our event? Oh my God, it's gonna suck. Holy shit, what if, what if, what if we get stopped at customs and they're like, what are you doing in my country? What if, uh, what if everybody hates our event and they wanna leave? What if, it, what if it costs us way too much money and nobody actually pays for a ticket? What if, uh, no, Berlin's gonna be awesome because all our friends are gonna be there, we know so many people, and we are changing lives every day, and people like what we do, and we're, caught, we're making massive transformation in people's lives, and uh, it's gonna be great either way, no matter how many people come, or how little people come, and, and I'm sure enough people will buy tickets to make it worth the cost of the trip, and, uh, and man, Berlin is such a cool country. It's so affordable and friendly. Oh my god! Oh my god! But but I think I have the sniffles. Oh my god! Is it gonna work? Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! I'm six months pregnant. Oh my oh god. god! We probably just shouldn't go. My feet are gonna hurt too bad. Oh my god! Uh, maybe we should just stay home and cuddle. Maybe we should just stay home and get jobs like real parents. Oh my god! <laughs> People who are about to have a baby. Oh my god! I can't believe we're going all the way to Berlin and. <laughs> And like three of our European clients are coming. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You guys get the point. So I wanna ask how many of you who are watching right now are like, why is this thing that I'm dreaming about not happening? I saw law of attraction work. Mm -hmm. It's this basic simple thing. If you are in constant fear, worry, doubt that it's not here, you are driving the bus clear and steer away from the thing that you want. That's it. And it it's sounds essentially like fucking simple, right? Are it's, you are you thinking about what you want, or are you thinking about the lack of what you want? Yes, that's what Abraham Hicks always talks about. Is it is it picturing yourself with that thing and succeeding, or picturing all the ways that it could go wrong and all the all the ways your life sucks without it? So now, so is it the lack of the thing, or is it the thing that you're thinking about? That's the thought that's going to materialize. Yeah. Um, so here's the tricky part. If you've been on a destructive path, <coughs> excuse me, of negative thoughts, your bus is going that way. And what you have to do to turn the bus around is start thinking positive thoughts no matter what. Sounds a little crazy, but it's true. Yeah, at, at first, when you first start doing this, you guys, when we first started doing this, it felt like we were lying. Like it felt and like we were right. We were because our life fucking sucked. We had manifested some real shitty stuff in our life. I but mean, here's, 
Here's the um, cool thing about your life really, really sucking is at that point it's kind of like rock bottom. It's like might as well try, might as well try this this freaking this crazy hip, thing, hippie ass crazy shit. This, that, might as well start lying to ourselves because what else have we got to lose? Nothing. We've already lost it all. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so so we started we started doing it, and and initially it really did feel like we were just totally making shit up. We so, put ourselves on a negative thought fast. Like if you brought something up. That didn't feel good. I was like, uh-uh. Thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. For three months we did that. And, and yeah, we weren't allowed to talk about anything negative. What, what, if we were feeling bad, if we were feeling sick, if we were feeling sad or upset about something, we'd gone through a pretty like traumatic experience about two and a half years ago. Um, and immediately after it happened, we just didn't talk about it at all. Um, which felt, again, it felt counterintuitive. And it felt like, how is this going to fix anything? But honestly, within three months of that happening, within three months of moving to Scotland, hi Valentine, we were totally over it. I mean, it wasn't even, we moved to Scotland in July, beginning of July, and by October, we were totally over what had happened and before we went to Scotland. You know what? Here's the cool thing. There was no residual feelings, anger, resentment, pain, sadness. We were in about we were done with it. Twelve thousand dollars worth of credit card debt from mm -hmm. what happened with the studio. And I was like, not gonna look at the bill, not gonna look at the bill, not gonna look at the bill. Just stay happy, just stay happy, just stay happy, just stay happy. I mean, we kept paying the bill. We kept paying it to the very, very minimum on an automatic. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, 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 um, we hired a, um, an accountant. An accountant. Mm -hmm. was like, doing. Just settle the, just settle it. Just stop paying for three months mm -hmm. and then settle it. Yeah. And we ended up settling that debt for like, Three thousand dollars. Less than three thousand dollars. Yeah. And that was just Miracles can happen, guys. Just think happy, just think happy, just think that happy. That was just all that happened just by calling the bank and being like, look, dude, I just don't have this. I'm I got sorry. I got scammed, I got this, and yeah. my wife pregnant not, or whatever. I wish you weren't pregnant at the time, but <laughs> here's another funny thing. If you this is I'll just give you a little tip. Don't don't take it fully from me, but if you if you already have shitty credit, and we didn't have shitty credit at the time, no, um, we had luckily, really great credit. Luckily, it was on a random business credit. It was yeah, it was a business credit card. So if you have shitty credit already and you've got a crap load of debt, a lot of people don't know you can settle that debt. Stop paying it for a couple of months, and then right before they put you to collections, call and be like, hey, I owe you ten thousand dollars. Can I I, can I I can give you three. And they'll probably say yes. Yeah. They're like, okay, it's better than nothing. This is how much the settlement plays would get anyway. Might as well just get rid of this person. So, no, dude, but this video is not to teach you guys how to, to, you how, to, how, to settle, how to wiggle how to out of credit card yeah. debt. <laughs> but this is just one way in which changing your thoughts about something can turn it into an actual thing in your life. But so here's the crazy here's thing. this thing that's looming over us for months and months that was just like, Horrible, sad. It was a reminder of our pain. It was a reminder of the the thing that happened. But here's the crazy thing. My mom did debt. Was a debt collector for a while. Uh -huh. Worked for a medical company. Collected on bills. And I knew in the back of my mind that places who who were collecting money would settle your debt. But that thought did not come through until I was in a better place. Until I had thought consistent, happy thoughts. And was driving the bus this way, and I was driving the bus so much this way that I got this idea, like, oh my god, I totally forgot this was a thing, I can do this thing. Mm. So that's the other thing that happens when you're driving the bus in the direction of your happy place, is you'll get the ideas and you'll get the opportunities that align with where your thoughts and your feelings are. So I want to ask you guys out there, what... Um, okay. What is it out there in life? What is it that you want right now? What is the biggest thing that you want in life? Type it in the comments. Is it to get out of debt? Is it to buy a house? Is it to have kids? Is it to own your own yoga studio one day? Is it to 
uh, quit your job and become a full-time dancer. Is it to fall in love when we get there? Yeah. yeah. What is it that you want? Can you see my jazz? What? No, I don't think so. What do you What do you not have in your life that you know if you had it in your life, your life would feel amazing, and that you would feel very happy and fulfilled? Just what is it? Thing that you always wanted. What, yeah. What, what do you want? You tell us. Want? So just type, type it in the comments. What's missing from your life right now that you long for, so, that you, you guys, yearn for? Can you guys tell when I'm like washing my? Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. That's yeah. pretty obvious. Yeah. So type it in the comments box. Uh, I have to say, everything that I've wanted. The only thing we have yet to get is buy a house. Buy a house. But like everything else that I've wanted, like traveling, working while traveling, I getting go, pregnant, I go to Japan. Um, going That's to nice. Bali, going to Scotland, those were, those were, I made a vision board, guys, uh, a couple, three years ago, three and a, three and a half years ago, something like that. Um, and I, it was a blank white board, and the first things I painted on it were Scotland and Bali. And those are the two biggest places we have traveled um, that have been so amazing for us. So um, Lola wants, let's see what Lola wants. Make a oh. 10K a month. 10K a month. Travel the world teaching and leading people, people in groups, group. moving to a, a sunny, warm, warm place with a backyard, backyard, a beautiful yoga, yoga room, room, office, and music studio. studio. I can go, go on. on. Okay. Awesome. Great. All right, so that's a good, good example of talking about one thing that you want. And so with manifestation, with the law of attraction, with your thoughts becoming things, Lola, I want to know how often do you think about how much your life is not there right how now. How much do you feel? How much do you feel uh, stress and pressure? Because of the absence of it. Because of the absence of it, right? And so you're living in um, yes, Jersey so City. This way. And how often do you feel like, oh god, this city is just pressing in on me, and I feel so, oh my god, I need space, I need warmth, I need sunlight, I need, uh, I need a backyard. Like there's no space here. How often do you feel exasperated with the lack of space? Maybe I can So, just throwing that out there. Water, warm. <laughs> um, so that is one example. If that is something that you do, Lola, and I don't know whether it is or not, um, but that is one example, because there's a little bit of a delay here, I think. That is one example of how your thoughts can become things. And if you're constantly thinking about how much the current place you live sucks because you want to live somewhere different, you're gonna get more of the current place. And the things that piss you off about the current place are gonna piss you off even more. Um, so this is what actual magic is. It's being able to see beyond your current reality and beyond your current limitations. Okay. That's simply what magic is. And also, what I was going to add was that what you have to do to manifest the thing that you want is get happy first where you are. So, you just using Lola's example, because I know it's many people's examples out there. If what you really want is to move somewhere warm with a big backyard that's bright and sunny, but where you currently live is, is cold and polluted and dark and cramped, um, then you can't think, well, when I move to that sunny open place, then I'm going to be happy, because it's never going to happen. You have to get happy first. If you are yes. currently seeing the dampness, the complaining, the whining, the fear, the, the, the how much you hate it, you're going to attract another place just like that. Right, how you're gonna to move to that big, open, sunny, warm place and attract a cold, dark, corrupt house somehow, or something. Somehow, <laughs> it'll be crazy, but somehow. How many of you have been like, gosh, I love that one guy or that That one actually girl. happened to us. Oh, yeah. We moved to San Diego thinking, oh my God, okay, it's going to be beautiful weather every day. It's going to be like big Calif Southern California, blah, blah, blah. and somehow we moved to these like kind of small cramped places in neighborhoods that reminded us exactly of Chicago. If you don't <laughs> drop and shift the way you feel before you attract something, you'll just get the same shit. You'll get another version of the same thing. Yeah. How have you so, done that? You hop from one house to the next, and it was the same, like same situation. Or like attracted another roommate that was just as crappy. Or attracted another boyfriend or girlfriend 
that right. was equally as cray cray. So this is what I'm talking about when I say that when you start practicing the very basics of law of attraction, it feels like you're lying because you're going to be living in this place that feels cold, dark, cramped, small, polluted, whatever, when you want to be living in the opposite. And you're gonna and you're gonna be like, my life is great. My house is so spacious. Look at my studio. Look at how much room I have in here. I feel so grateful for this room I have in my studio apartment. Look at this big open yard. I love this big like even if you don't have a yard. So you, here's you know, the thing. And so if you cannot lie to yourself in the situation you are in, then you need to do a little bit of get a little creative. For instance. In order to get a little creative when your house really, really, really sucks, you might just need to leave. Like, be out of the house all the time. Um, go to a tanning bed and meditate for an hour. No, that sounds horrible. Don't yeah, do that. don't do that. Um, no, uh, like, make a vision board with the house that you do want on it. And look at that vision board every day and write a letter of gratitude thanking the universe for this amazing, beautiful, open, sunny, spacious house with a beautiful, large backyard. Spend right? a lot of time. Visualize it. Feel that feeling of happiness and joy that you're going to have when you do get there. And make yourself feel as though it's already yours to the point where you feel gratitude for having it. And you feel so happy, so grateful that you do have it, that you just think, you know, you just send out a prayer of gratitude every single day. That's where you need to get in order to manifest something. Um, and what I would say is also just start feeling gratitude for the things you do have. Exactly. That's yeah. a huge piece. So get happy first, and then the things will come later. This is the big important thing. And if you can't get happy first, nothing's going to change. So this is also something that I do in our relationship. Whenever oh yeah, you can do this. I mean, this is we're just using a basic example with housing, guys. But this is something that applies to every area of life. Whenever we get into like a pocket of, of, of uh, like a bickery week, um, it doesn't happen very often. Maybe like every four to six months. Mm -hmm. uh, if it gets too unbearable, and I'm a sensitive person, so it gets unbearable really quickly. I start. I like I draw a line in the sand with myself and I say all right no more complaining about your partner from now on here on out you are being the person that you want her to be you are being grateful you're being happy you are being loving you are being funny you are not emotionally latching on to the tiny things that you think are big right now because you're just seeing all the negativity in your life so I draw a line in the sand and I go on a negativity fast and it takes like three days before everything is great again. If that, maybe three hours. Yeah. 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 Well, it takes about three days because maybe like two days because at that point, if we're, we're in a bickery pocket, you're used to me being negative and you're still responding to me being negative and I made you all prickly and blah, 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 I, blah, I blah, kind blah. of get suspicious when you come out of nowhere and all of a sudden you're trying to be sweet and happy. I'm like, should I trust you? <laughs> Three days later, I do. But when she does that, and I trust you thing, I just have to not emotionally hook. Yeah. So when there's something that you want to change in your life, say your house, your city, or whatever, when you see that thing that normally pisses you off, you just cannot emotionally hook. You have to be like, oh, yeah. this, this is my cue to be grat grateful and to say, like, I have the power to change this if I change this thought and this feeling right now. Gratitudinous. Gratitudinous. Do not, do so, not hook. So here's the thing, guys. Thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. It's the simplest feelings phrase. and thoughts become things. Yeah. And next time you catch, you know, here's also one thing I want to leave you with. It takes time. It takes time to reprogram the way your brain Thinks, the way your thoughts, the direction that your thoughts move in. It takes time to reprogram that. Because if you're if you are a person who's grown up with negative parents, parents were in scarcity, in fear about money, in fear about emotions, don't talk about their emotions, then you already have 15, 20 plus years of programming that you have to rewire. Um, if you are even older than that and you've carried that programming into your adult life with you, it can take a lot of time 
to rewire this. So don't be hard on yourself if you can't reprogram your thoughts instantly. That is actually one of the things you need to be careful of. Is, is punishing yourself punishing for not yourself doing it right. Not doing it. Right. It's just the moment you catch it, you yeah. go, yay, I yes. caught it. Yes. So I'm going to give you one tip. And I'm going to tell you one story after that. Okay, okay. This is a good one. We're going on. Um, so I'll give you one tip on, on if you are somebody who's like, oh, crap, ah, oh, yeah. you keep catching yourself in a negative spiral and you don't know how you get there. And you're like, why do I keep doing this? Um, the tip is this. Don't let yourself spend more than 17 seconds on any negative thought. So if you catch yourself gossiping about somebody, if you catch yourself telling a, a sad story about your life or complaining or just being negative in general, and you say, okay, you speak one sentence about it, you can start to feel your mood and your body shift. You speak another sentence about it. The other person's like, yeah, that sucks. And you're like, yeah, it sucked. Suck. And then, then catch yourself. 17 seconds in, catch yourself. Go, oh, okay, I just spent 17 seconds on that. I'm gonna change gears. Would I rather I love this washing, washer and dryer. Like, you know we're in Europe when the washer and dryer are next to the bathtub. Would you rather complain or would you rather have the thing? Right, exactly. How, how good does complaining feel versus how good does actually having your vision that you want for yourself The other thing feel? Is, is that seemingly negative thing in your life might actually be a positive thing. It feels so important to complain about in the moment. It's really not. It might be the, the obstacle that is redirecting you towards the thing that you want. So yeah. here's a really good example. One of my dear clients, Joe, is freaking amazing. We get on a coaching call on Tuesday and he says, I don't know how, I don't know what's going to take me there, but I am going to run again. And he realized on that call, he has the realization that it's not the how that gets him there, it's the absolute deep knowing and that big emotional decision that he will do it again. And, and you know, you make a big emotional decision when you have faith. He's like, I'm going to freaking run again. And uh, the thing with Joe is, Joe, uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't run because he couldn't feel his feet. He had numbness in his feet. And he's like, I don't know how, I don't, you know, he didn't even say I have numbness in my feet. I didn't even know what was going on, but I'm like, okay, you'll run again. Yeah, we're going to do this. Um, so over the course of a week between that call, where he made that big decision, and the next Tuesday, he stubbed his toe, but he didn't feel it because his feet were numb. And then his daughter looks down at his toe and he's like, oh, she's like, oh my God, dad. What is wrong with your toe? And his toe is like black and blue, and like hanging off. He goes, oh, I couldn't even feel that. I just can't feel his feet. Wow. So he goes to the doctor just in time, and the doctor's like, you need to have an emergency surgery because you're gonna lose your toe. So how many of you at this moment would be like, I just said I was going to roll again. Hey, roll Joe's roll watching. Roll. Hi, Joe. I'm telling your story. Joe, I hope you don't mind. We're telling your toe story. Should we bring Joe on camera? Uh, finish, nah, just finish okay. the story. So, <laughs> so how many of you, toe. after stubbing your toe and having to go to the hospital and getting surgery, would be like, blah, you would just start steering the bus in, in like shit, shit show, crazy, upset land? How many of you would do that? Not Joe. Joe was like, I know how this works. Something good is coming from this. So after Joe had surgery, the doctor said, I hope I'm not botching this, but the doctor basically said, you know, we opened up a new, like some blood vessel or something in your leg, and now you're gonna be able to feel your feet. And we so can- So did they again. amputate the toe? Huh? Did they amputate the toe? No, the toe's good. Oh, wow. So now, one foot, Joe can feel his feet. And then they did it on the other foot, so Joe can feel his feet. What does feeling your feet mean? Within a week, Joe! It means you can run again. Yeah, Joe! So, that seemingly negative thing in your life drives the bus. Like, could, could actually be the positive thing in your life. Yeah. So if you are quick to complain. Or quick to, to go to doom and gloom. Could quick to take go, yourself. Go to doom oh, and yay, gloom. Joe, I'm gonna film me running. That's amazing. Oh, it's but, so good. But here's the, here's the other thing is that like positive mindset is what puts you in this chance encounter with your daughter who sees your toe just in time for your toe to get saved. Wow. The negative mindset, you'll be wearing socks. It's, it's the little instincts from the universe yeah. that 
drive the bus literally yeah. because of the way that you're feeling and thinking that is how you are guided that is it's, it's not chance guys it's all in your it's all in your head mm -hmm. absolutely all right guys so this is an extra long episode tonight i hope you enjoyed it um live from berlin germany deutschland guten nacht and uh willkommen and dankeschön and that's, that's the only words i know how to say in german Maybe tomorrow we'll do now. another one because we have this great bathtub and we'll have some really cool people here. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. Uh, we love, love you, Joe. We love all of you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Love you, Lola. Love you, Preeti. Love you, Priya. Yeah. Whoever else is watching, I can't tell. Thank you for coming on. We'll hey, see you guys soon. Who's coming to the next magma in uh, San Diego? April, April 10th through the 14th, 2019 in San Diego, who's California. Coming? We'll be see amazing. you there.